What happens when a YouTuber who hasn't worked in food service in over a decade takes over a New York City restaurant and turns it into grandma's house for Sunday supper? Well, what I can tell you happens is stress. Oh, you're the chef. Petty sibling argument. No. Ball busting. Stand up. No. My cabeza hurts. Few stumbles. And a few laughs. <laughs> But along the way, I learned a secret about food, cooking, and the tradition of Sunday supper that's taken me 36 years to truly understand. You wanna know that secret? You're really gonna have to watch the whole video through to understand it. So stay till the end, but for now, we got a fun ride, so let's just jump right into it. So in order for me to pull off a stunt like this, I'm gonna need a crackpot team of Goombas that I can trust. So you're gonna need to meet them first. First up, we got the Italia brothers, Chris and Paul, the two owners of the Stan Comedy Club. Chris and I work on the entertainment aspect of the evening. Just do it. And Paul is the front man for all things operations and logistics running the service. I got workers comp and disability. Next, you know my brother Dave, who's the point man in the kitchen. He's helping me do the heavy lifting, both literally and figuratively. Next to Dave is Chef Bamba and Chef Carlos, the stand's in-house rock star chefs who crush it and are providing support. Next up, we got the mozzarella master and expert on all things Italian, Angelo Capitello. Okay. We got 23 plates. And he comes with Jess Palace. I'm putting my Italian spin on it who's a food stylist, who played a key role as well. Now who else you don't see is my cameraman Diego, who impressed me thoroughly on how he kept up in the chaos of a kitchen. So I just wanna thank Diego off the bat. Now remember in a normal show, like the one you see me usually do here, I have complete control over every single detail of everything that I do. That will not be the case today, which is a large reason why this thing has been stressing me out for a while, and will continue to stress me out through the course of this video. I've been able to set my attention on just one thing for five years. And today I'm gonna have to remember how to focus on many things at once. Skill I'm not always great at. So for me, the pressure is on. Angelo, Dave, Paul, and I arrive at the stand Friday afternoon to receive deliveries from orders and sponsors and to get a lay of the land. Just leave some for the guests. I think it's a great bottle with these guys. They want to do business with me. I had a dolcetta here already. I ordered this one. I had wood roasted broccolini on the menu, but it turns out that the pizza oven actually doesn't take wood. No. Not a big deal. It goes, it's automatic. Inch, look, it's automatic. Sharp. Sure. Yes, he's yeah. yeah. Uh, look, he just lets it go. Yeah. You crank it up and sleep, let it go. Maybe it's fancy machine, huh? No, I got it, you know, special price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Off, the Fell off the truck. Yeah. <laughs> Once we got situated and got our products sorted out. We're gonna have extra stuff, I know we are anyway. Very good. Sasich. My brother and I started prepping a few things. He got started on the roasted peppers, and I got started working on the sauce. Now, I need the best tomatoes for my sauce, and short of making your own pureed tomatoes from tomatoes from Mount Vesuvius, the best ones I know of in America are these Bianco Di Napoli tomatoes who are friends of the channel. So I get started running these through my new commercial food mill, which I'm obsessed with. But I gotta tell you, man, there's just something about sauce that makes people nostalgic like no other. So every August, Season. Get them from Jersey. They're not great. I gotta be honest. He has them reserved for her. She gets like maybe six bushels. Then she like lays it all out on the dining room table for like two days. It's like a whole weekend. It's a whole it starts Thursday and it's Monday morning. It's just crazy to me how every Italian has this same story. It's beautiful. By the time I'm done milling the tomatoes, my brother's done with the roasted red peppers. Just kind of got to prep a few more things, like a garlic puree, slice some garlic, then we're going to catch a quick show and then get some rest. Go 
Now, Sunday sauce is essentially a Neapolitan ragu, a tomato-based sauce that uses beef and pork and all their fats to add an elevated sweet flavor to the sauce that is so delicious and is the centerpiece and backbone of a Sunday sub. The meats flavor the sauce and the sauce cooks the meats. It's a give and a take relationship and when it's done, you separate the two and you serve a pasta course and a meat course separately as a second course or a segundi. So my brother gets started searing the pork rajol, one of the three meats we're using to flavor the sauce. The only concern we had was the stuffing bleeding too much into the sauce. It's something we're paying attention to and watching out for. While Dave focuses on that, I get started on the sauce. Getting it up to temperature and, and adding all the flavors, essentially making a huge batch of weekday sauce, which is a staple on the channel. Usually a ragu like this uses a mirepoix, carrot, celery, and onion, but I wanted to keep it pure. We're using some of the best tomatoes in America, so I wanted them to shine. How many pounds? Two eggs, one and a half pounds. And while I do that, my brother's getting started on the meatball can't cook all the meats at once, otherwise it won't really fit in the pot. So we're treating it sort of like the community swimming pool. Every meat's gonna have some time to spend in the pool. And then I go ahead and get the brajol, my brother seared into the sauce, while my brother works on getting the meatballs started. To be honest, the meatballs were my biggest stress. I think highly of my meatball recipe, to be quite honest, but I've never made them for a hundred people. So I'm nervous something won't translate in scaling them like, you, like your fingertips. Yes, yes. I got you. Maybe they won't be as flavorful, or maybe they won't be as tender. I don't know, but it's just bothering. So my brother and I just gave it a minute of focus. Almost, it's more, you added a... Uh, Six. The, when, I, when I scaled it up, it, it's seven cups. Breadcrumbs, pecorino, garlic, they need salt, tomato sauce. I'll know when it's right based off the smell. I know, I'm just saying, like, it'll I'll seal it if there is. Like, like I that's little, perfect. I do a little dollop of olive oil. We have a scale. And I think we came pretty close for our first run. Once we've made the mix, we get the meatballs portioned, weighed, and rolled into balls so that we can cook them tomorrow. 38. Then we get the brajol out of the sauce. We let it cool overnight so that's easy to cut tomorrow. And then finish up the meatballs, catch a quick comedy show, and then get some rest. We need to discuss the anatomy of a Sunday supper. The thought process is basically this. As guests arrive, they're gonna be greeted with an antipasti bar with cocktails, some cured meats, cheeses, and of course, Angela's famous mozzarella that's made fresh and served warm. As the guests are seated at the table, they're gonna be greeted with a little bowl of Sunday sauce and some fresh ricotta and some hot focaccia, which is meant to symbolize that act of walking around the kitchen while the sauce is being cooked in grandma's house and just taking a little dip of bread and giving it a taste. It's to sort of get an isolated taste of the Sunday sauce that is the focus of this meal. Then onto the ensalada course, which is a spicy kale Caesar salad with sesame croutons. And then the main course, which is our rigatoni with Sunday sauce and three meats. The rigotta meatballs, the Italian sauces that Angelo's family prepares, and then the brajol that Angelo made. And then of course the meal ends with my grandma's signature cookie tin. But this leaking is causing my pressure to go down. So the whole machine is going bust on me right now. No, I've had this machine forever. And it never gave me a problem. And now it's this is the first time in like, I don't know, six years that I've owned it. So now it's the day of the event, Sunday, November 14th. We arrive at the stand at around 12.30 and begin prepping. I start cutting kale and Dave starts slicing the cooled brajol thinly and then layering it into sheet pans so that we could warm it up and then keep it hot off to the side. The idea is to sort of give all of the meat some time into that sauce, to flavor the sauce and then we can figure out the consistency later. So my brother takes the meatballs that we made yesterday and fries them out to kind of brown them efficiently. One thing I did know is Dave kept walking away from the fryer, so I had to keep an eye out on things. He keeps walking away from it. Oh, damn it. Just like that perfect. I banged out slicing the kale, and now I'm onto the broccolini for the broccolini aglio oli. Once Dave's done frying all the meatballs, it's time to get them into the sauce to get cooking. Then he gets started searing the sausages.
it's at this point that Chris dumps the idea on me to get up on stage, welcome the guests, go over the menu, and sort of interact with the comedians hosting. But honestly, all I could see is the sausages my brother's searing that are getting too charred. Wait, I don't know, I'll get you that. I'll get you that up for us today. Dave, let's let's char. Brown, not black. What? Brown, not I'm, black. I'm trying to control this flat top seat. Right, yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly am not psyched about getting on stage with all this stuff going on in the kitchen, but Chris has a way of convincing me to do things. I have one to do, so just do it. Like, I don't see it. I'm asking questions. Now before I get pulled on stage, there's still some things we gotta make sure we're on top of, like the broccolini. My idea was to kind of par cook the broccolini and then finish it in olive oil and garlic like you would a pasta. And we have a lot of broccolini, so we're gonna use the pizza oven to kind of get that nice char that I'm looking for. We're gonna do more than one tray at a time. we do two. But that looks good. And we can just finish them a la minute in the pan. Maybe? Well, yeah, like I wanna, yeah. Oh, nice. 4.30, do we have time? This feels like not enough time, I don't know. Now what you must know is my brother and I have run a food truck before. And in case you didn't notice, we kind of have a special way of working with each other. Well, I mean, Angelo's still right here, he's gotta do all of his stuff. We are opposites in many ways. He's more chef-y. Besides heat up focaccia. Heat up focaccia, mix well, Slicing meats is fine. And I like to cook more like a grandma. Those two mindsets often clash. For pasta, the only thing we have to cook. Um, we need to make uh, the, uh, the, the garlic, the sliced garlic oil. What do you mean sliced garlic? We're cooking it in garlic and oil. You keep talking about a garlic oil. You know like you put oil in pan, the broccolini, yeah. sliced garlic, yeah. chili I'm saying make it easier if you if you make the oil with the garlic and the chili already. Why? Why? Okay, now we do it all on the floor. You're gonna do a big rondo. But I must admit they do offer a nice balance. Big, lots of garlic, lots of oil, chili flake, get them out. I go, go to just bring me the garlic because I'm gonna slice more of them. We love each other, but this behavior is nothing new. Hey, you're, you're the, the mouth, you're the mouth all mine, Steve. If I... No, I'm trying to... Tell me to wait, 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 wait. Like yesterday, did I say don't slice garlic? Take out your anger. So I get a little cranky here. This is the time I'm getting a little tired. I'm gonna have to set it into overdrive. That was in the details. Um, you got you got your camera guy yesterday. So I got two cameras too. Like, so just give me like the run of show. How does this go down? What's gonna happen? The cocktail hour. Uh, I'm gonna interrupt you for a second. Perfect. So, yeah. Uh, the thicker they are, though, the more we're gonna toast them. All right. Yeah. We're gonna be outside, kind of playing, making mozzarella, slicing prosciutto, uh, so there'll be like uh, visual stuff to capture. When you say outside, where are you gonna be? Outside the. Uh, bar, uh, the pizza, pizza bar. Area. Okay, so you'll be setting up, and will it be you personally? I mean, I don't know. Can you talk to Ann? Where's Ann? I don't know. You guys, you guys have the, you guys want the tins back in yet? Is, can wanna, somebody uh, wait, wipe them out? They're all cleaned up. Okay. Um, you want to put them downstairs? Where are you guys going to yeah, load problem, those cookies in? We're going to load the cookies up after dinner here. All right, so let's, let's situate it. How are you going? Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. Take them out. You wanna try? What? Wanna try? I haven't tried it yet. Wanna try? Remember when we were worried about the Brajol stuffing seeping into the sauce? Well, it happened. Yeah, too runny. Yeah, too runny. I'm like, you want? So our solution is to strain some of that into a smaller pot and reduce it to the proper consistency free of any sort of unwanted particles in the sauce. Then we're just moving along, getting everything ready, addressing issues as they come. Put this in smaller container. What's the boil on the pasta? Because you say you want to do it on the fly. No, I know, but okay, we're going to finish the pasta in the sauce, correct? I need a big enough pot for all the pasta. Because we can't just do it back. People are going to be waiting if we don't. That's why I said park cook the, the, the pasta. I think park cook would be... Well, let's... Uh, what time is the thing? Uh, seven. Yeah, it's time of some pasta work. We're just going to leave this in the pot for now. So where is the corner? So it's no problem with you.
Then Angelo picked up this incredible Sardinian sheep's milk ragotha. Finally out of the bread and broccoli zone of life. Oh, look how creamy. My hope is really to pipe this, but I'm sort of questioning if that's going to be possible. You really don't have to whip it. The fatigue's making me a little sloppy, and I started to make some mistakes. Of course I forgot to salt all the ragotta. So remove it, mix in the salt, taste it, get it back in the piping bags. And then I get my balls busted for stressing out. My brother's always trying to be a funny guy. Hey, the jokes there. There's a comedy club. Five minutes later, Steve. Stand up. No, see, don't twist my words. I said I always wanted to do stand up. Good laugh can snap you out of a funky mood real quick. That's why you gotta keep good people around. <laughs> see, yeah, this is the Casado, uh, you know, uh, motivational structure of our house. Now we got Angelo and Jess in the house, and right off the bat, Jess jumps into a very vital part of the meal, which is my grandma's cookies. I'm putting my Italian spin on it. Which I knew I wanted to serve in tins, the exact tins my grandma served them in, but I didn't quite know how, but Jess is a food stylist, and she really nailed it. I couldn't imagine it looking that good. Now it's about 6.30, the guests are arriving, it's supper time. The secret to great fresh mozzarella is good curds. We use this great Belgioso mozzarella curd. We cut it up, you add hot water, you melt it, you stretch it, then you shape it. And Angelo's a master at it. So this is your jam, right? This is a specialty? This is something I've been doing for about 25, 26 years. Ooh. I'm not that, I, I know I look old, but I'm not, I'm not that old. <laughs> I don't. Just a number, just a number. <laughs> now we start tightening up this kitchen and preparing for the rush. Is that water? Yeah. No, I'm just getting it out of the big pot, you know? Oh, okay. It's big and it's a pain in the ass. Now that the sauce is strained of any of that breadcrumbs from the brajol, the focus is on making sure the sauce is the perfect consistency. So we're just going to test it until it's the proper thickness to coat the pasta and the meats perfectly. Get a little bit more, yeah. It's got to mix it in the bottom. It's not quite the perfect thickness, so we're going to keep it going. That's like the minimum thickness it should be. Maybe it's a little soft. It's fine because you gotta put over the Yeah, yeah. yeah. How you doing, guys? How you doing? Then, of course, we had a quick inspection from Chris and Paul's father. Hello, Diego. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Diego, boy, you're making it. And then the friends started rolling in. All right. What, 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 Let's guys, grab about six of the four of us yeah, before we get going. Gennaro's here. That's what's I'm here, man. I'm here. No left on this. Yes. Yes, <laughs> then we gotta have a quick meeting. We've gotta figure out the juggling of all these moving parts and to try and time everything perfectly. Or maybe even both. If they're boiling, you can shut off both. So let's aim to Whatever. drop that pasta around. Uh, 745. 740. I'm gonna go up on stage around eight. So you're gonna have to do it eight. Well, Hacha going out on its own or without? Going out on its own. Okay, so at around 8 after I welcome, then everybody sits down or everyone's seated. And then the hot focaccia, rigota, sauce, Caesar salads go out. Yeah. Halfway through that, when they're still eating, we fire the pasta. And then by the time that they're cleared, pasta's tossed, it's cooking a little bit more in the pan. Wait, the meat, it will be like right here. It's warm. Do that, but my mom garnish uh, broccoli. I'm talking about 20 minutes. Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. So while we're plating, while we're plating they're the going to fire, fire the new fire pasta, pasta, so then pasta. we do it again. Okay. Now, how many plates like this you need? It's around 6.30, so we gotta get stations prepped, mozzarella's ready to be served, and it's time for us to start to play host. Yeah, I'm gonna move up front with it, though. Can you watch this video this way? Yeah, sure. I have a piece of the sweet salami, a piece of the salami, and then the prosciutto I have with the trotter on it. Let me say that. Yeah. 
Now I'm out to meet the crowd and slice meats. And let me tell you a little secret. I've never used this machine before. Didn't really know how it works, but you better believe I made it look like I knew what I was doing. And then Angelo's over here just doing what he does best, blowing people's minds with this mozzarella. Now I'm sure you've all had fresh mozzarella before, but what you've had is mozzarella seized in water. This is hot, fresh mozzarella. It is an entirely different thing. I mean, look at Sean over here eating mozzarella like a Greek god. This was a really fun aspect of the night. This interactive aspect of it made it feel more like a dinner party rather than a food service, which was really our goal at the end of the day. Irrigation is everything, baby. Now after getting most of the antipasti bar set up, Bomba and the guys needed me to tell them how I wanted a few things plated. Now usually most whipped ricottas can be piped and hold their shape, but this Sardinian sheep's milk not, cheese not is too one. creamy. It's not thick enough. It's not thick enough. This way? Yep. Put that in here. But life in the kitchen is about problem solving. Get a little piece of bread. Can you go this way? It's too much, no? spread like that. Yeah, we're just kind of yeah. troubleshooting something. And then so. Yeah? Yeah? Let's see it, Steve. Maybe a little bit more. And then a, and then a basil? Yeah, you got the basil, right? One piece should be enough, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, what? Perfect. Game on. Problem solved, let's get back out there and try and slice some prosciutto. Now this is a whole trotter of prosciutto and it's a big boy. So I got some nice slices going at first. Would you like some? Yeah. Yes sir. How are you doing? Good man, thanks so much for coming. Yes. So happy to see you guys. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. This is beautiful man. Everything's looking great. But at some point, started having issues and I just gave up, moved it over to the actual slicer, finished up slicing the prosciutto, and then that concludes the antipasti. Take a quick second to mingle for a minute, and then I've got some business back in the kitchen. So now we're back in the kitchen and we're trying to sort out the plating situation, kind of realizing we might be running a little short on plates. Usually they don't serve all their tables at once, like we're attempting to do today, which is something we didn't really account for, but we're gonna make it work. We might just have to mix and match a little bit. These, these, though, is a little bigger, who cares? Okay. What are you thinking, like a few strips? Kind of, uh, just by the, if there's four people, put eight pieces, uh, you know, six pieces, where it looks like. Okay. Okay. I have a, a food mill, uh, I have a pepper mill over there. I was gonna go around and just ask, uh, is that too much, you think? Would you like, like, like a, a fancy Italian restaurant? Yeah, with, like a, with a, a little towel. Yeah, it is too much. A little towel, and we'll go on every <laughs> table. It's a lot of tables, I didn't think it would be that many tables. Wait, how many, look. This is all, this this count to give is only 42 people. We have more than 42 people, right? I think the rest are two. Now, ever since Chris told me he wants me to go up on stage and introduce the meal, that's just been an extra layer of stress on my mind. I'm having trouble remembering simple things like the menu I'm serving tonight. Done. We're gonna have the Bay Maria hot sauce right here. We're gonna put it on the things. They're gonna come, the focaccia's gonna go over there and they're gonna grab the focaccia and put it on the plate as they bring it to the table. Okay. Yeah. All right. That works. All I can think about right now is the hell am I gonna stay on stage? And while I'm getting prepared to greet the guests, the crew is working hard getting the Sunday sauce and we're going to dip plates prepared and the focaccia toasted and nice and hot. These are gonna go out to the guests as I greet them and the meal will begin. I'm doing the one six. That's, a, that's the one six top. I stab myself. Be careful. Oh God, Jesus. One last thing before I head up on stage is to check the seasoning of the Caesar salad. Hospital with a knife. Oh, 
Yeah. I think it's good. It's like a, a few bites that taste bland. Maybe a little bit more. What, what do you think? Up, right? oh, what do you think? And then you're good. Like a hair. <laughs> Just because it's a lot of kale. Well, no. Yeah. No. Now it's time to get things started. Hello, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Sunday supper. This is an event. Uh, the whole idea is that we are having traditional Italian dinner, uh, the same way you would on, you know, Sundays. And just like a traditional Italian dinner, there's a Cuban and a black guy on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Steve Casado. I make this quick. Uh, this is sort of like a revival of a uh, Grandma Sunday Supper. Round of applause for Angelo. Thank you for being here, everybody. Now that that's out of the way, the focus now shifts to getting 100 plates of pasta out at once. Back in the kitchen. Dave, we had a ragota? Right here, right here. Now, if you've ever heard the term a beast in the kitchen, it's referring to this bunch of guys. So take a moment to appreciate their work. Sorry, you're good, you're good. In the name of pasta, anything goes. Now a restaurant kitchen is very different than a home kitchen. It's loud, it's hot, there's flames and fire, it's dangerous, and it takes a certain type of person to excel at this skill. You've gotta respect restaurant people. They do a thing most people simply cannot do. I'm telling you, I got the inside. You're welcome. All right. You know the psycho and me would tell you if they didn't nail the cooking of this pasta, but they fucking nailed it. And then I realized at this point, I have no idea how to get this food out of the kitchen. So thank God Angelo was here. He's gonna be the expediter to make sure all the food gets out. And then it's just a matter of getting everything plated nicely and out the kitchen. And my job mainly at this point is to make sure every plate looks proper. Parmigiano Reggiano on top too. Yeah, I got it. And all the garnishes are added before the plates leave the kitchen. Yeah, we're, we're not sending anything out until you finish the dishes. Okay. I like that. I like the crumpled uh, fried. Yeah, so that one feel like it's the I'm distracted, but <laughs> I'm distracted. I want to eat. Service, oh, nice. guys, for the night top. All right. Things started off pretty smoothly, but at some point we started getting a little jammed up. Wait, 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 no, 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 Parmesan cheese. Where's the farm? I got it. Yeah, you got two pastas and two meats. Alright, I need two meats for the six top. Tables, guys, come on. Come on. Right, the food is hot. You gotta get to the tables. Okay, now we're gonna go with four. Wait, no, where is that going? Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Listen to what they're saying so you know where the food is going. For the four top. The pasta and the meat together. Pasta and the meat together goes to a four top. Got a little chaotic at times, but to be fair, it was our first time, and chaos is just part of the kitchen. Top one more pork. On so that's there. You just need a meat for sure it. I need, a meat. I need another meat for a pork top. We're almost there. We just need to push through one more bag. Everybody gets a plate now that we did the big dishes. Everyone gets a plate. All right. So are we gonna drop now for the second plate? Two table gets one, fours two. Big table yeah. gets two. Yeah. But after all that stress and panic leading up to the meal and then the chaos that ensued during service, once that last dish left the kitchen and I could take a breather, go outside, meet with the guests, see their reactions, see their smiles, get their feedback, hear their stories. Some came alone, some came in large groups. Others made new friends. Ladies, 
Yeah. Oh, shit. Everyone seemed genuinely happy. I'd come to realize something that I always knew, but it's really easy for me to forget in this new life I live. You see, my show sort of focuses on the execution of food. I rarely ever have to actually serve it to somebody and host. So with this, obviously, my focus was on trying to make sure everything was so perfect, to make sure that everyone was just blown away by the food. But this isn't the show. And maybe Sunday Supper is more than just making great food. Maybe Sunday Supper means a little bit more. Maybe the secret isn't if my meatballs perfectly scale up and taste exactly the same as they do when I make them here. Or that maybe not every aspect of the night went exactly as I had planned it to. It had been too long since I'd done service like this and in the past few years, it's just even been too long since I'd even hosted anything. But that night it became abundantly clear to me that the secret behind food and cooking and the tradition of a Sunday supper is people. People you enjoy being with. It's about family and friends, old friends, new friends, sharing a laugh, joking around, busting balls, creating a feeling of joy that comes when you feed someone something nostalgic, something that reminds them of their grandparents, or a past tradition, or a memory that they cherish. These are so cool. <laughs> yeah. Like snacks. Cool. Yeah. That feeling you can give to somebody when you make them feel at home, even though home may be far away. The feeling you get when you go to grandma's house and she feeds you Sunday supper. That was the point of this whole thing. Maybe it's the Italian grandma in me, or maybe I just channeled a bit too much of grandma's crazy, but I needed to get this event out of the way to prove to myself and to remind myself I can do something like this. And then I have the ability to host an event like this and to understand the true meaning of it. But still my biggest fear was just the, the food and executing it, scaling everything up, which is what we were discussing here with Chef Carlos at the end of the night. I agree on both sides because it is, it's the best, you know? It, 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 it ingredients the meatballs so that they don't have to shake. And then, like, if you just add all the ingredients at once because you just multiplied them. For now, see what happens? Like, yeah, for next time, it won't happen to you. Again. Yeah, <laughs> maybe the, the sheep's ricotta is not good for that. But in the end, it's people that make Sunday supper an event worthy of tradition. Without people, all you've got is a bowl of ragu. Amazing. <laughs> and for Fausto, who didn't get to be here, thanks for the limoncello, buddy. Hey, baby. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Send down again. Fausto. Oh, yeah. Fausto. Makes a good pizza and makes an even better limoncello. <laughs> I like it because it's tart. It's not like too sweet. I hate when it's too sweet. That's nice. I did a three. Beautiful. <laughs> now it's on to taking what we learned from this event and making the next one even better. And the next one is this Sunday, February 20th. If you want to join, I'd love to have you. The tickets are down in the description. I'll see you at Sunday Supper. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I don't need anything. You guys were perfect.